In this episode, we demonstrate how to reduce fairly steady state noise, like fan noise, maybe a kind of a steady state traffic noise outside of a building, from a dialogue recording using RX's voice denoise. Now, the good news, this is available in all versions of RX, including Elements, Standard, and Advanced. And what's also nice about it is that there is no latency, so you can actually use it for live audio processing as well if you needed to do that for a live stream, for example, or any other sort of live show where you can use a VST plugin, or it also comes in AU and VST3. I actually have a secret here. There actually is a set of numbers in this particular case that generally work well in a number of circumstances, and that's the settings that I have right now. Now, you still need to tune that if you're really trying to do a good job, a careful job, but these actually work quite well in a lot of circumstances, again, where you have steady state noise, like a fan. Um, if you have discontinuous noise, it's a completely different thing, so we'll have to come back to that in another episode. But let's go ahead and start here. Let me play the first few seconds so you can hear where we're starting. The other thing we say, though, is, uh, you know, parenting is really built on two pillars. One is structure, guidance. The other is love and warmth. Okay, so that's what the dialogue sounds. If you want to hear what the noise itself sounds like, it's this. So obviously some fans running there, some other things going on. So let's dive into the settings so you can understand what each of them does, and then that'll make it a lot easier for you to apply this for your own situations. But before we do that, what is this thing actually doing? Let me explain in very broad terms how it works. First, it uses 64 psychoacoustically spaced bandpass filters, which together act as a multi-band gate. Now you might be thinking to yourself, what in the world did he just say? I don't understand what that means. Let me try to describe it a little bit more. In the spectrogram view here, the orange trace that you see here, along this x-axis represents time, and the vertical axis refers to audio frequencies. So we have our low frequencies, our base frequencies down here at the bottom, and then our higher frequencies up here at the top. So that's what we're looking at here. You can see, for example, as this person is talking right here, we have are the low frequencies represented here, and then we have the higher frequencies, so you can see what their voice is doing. You can see here, sometimes the frequencies don't really extend beyond about 4,000 hertz, but when they do, they're probably saying something like the letter S, which you can hear has a lot more high frequency content. So that's what this represents here. Now, what's happening behind the scenes with the Voice Denoise plugin is basically they have set 64 different filters along this audio spectrum from, I mean, I don't know exactly what they cover, but probably somewhere from around 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz is my guess. And they've spaced them out in a way that makes sense from a psychoacoustics point of view. That is to say, sounds that our ears are generally very sensitive at picking up, they probably spaced them out so they can cover those frequencies appropriately. And then what happens is anytime sound falls below a certain amplitude, or I guess you could think of it in terms of the, the height of the waveform, if we go back to waveform view here, if it falls below a certain point, then it applies that filter for that particular frequency and pushes the noise down by however much you specify in the reduction setting. So that's a high level. Let's go ahead and talk about the settings here so it makes a little bit more sense. All right, so I'm gonna go back to this view just because it makes more sense from a noise reduction point of view. First, we have this learn button and the adaptive mode checkbox. So I'm gonna uncheck that here. If I uncheck it, I am now in manual mode. And in manual mode, what you have to do is highlight a period of time within the clip that is just noise, nothing else. And the reason you do that is you're telling the plugin, this is noise. So build your noise profile based on this selection here. If you select one section, you can select another section by holding the shift key down and also highlighting an additional section. Be careful, um, if you do highlight another section, what can happen a lot of times, those are breaths in between words, so you have to be careful. This is really helpful in this particular case because we actually have a couple of seconds and you generally want at least a second, preferably a couple of seconds of just noise. That's gonna get you the best results in most cases. Now, once I've highlighted that, I can go ahead and click on Learn, and you can see here it changed this profile right here, this blue line here with the big dots on it. That is our threshold. And again, anything, any audio along the spectrum that falls below this, this threshold gets reduced by however much we set 
the reduction to. So that's what's happening here. Now, what's interesting is that in this mode, I can actually tweak it. I can move these particular dots here to change the threshold profile if I want to do that. So if I really want to get aggressive on reducing the low frequencies, I could actually bump that up here, the threshold up. So anything that falls above minus 33.9 dB in this frequency range gets reduced by 6 dB. So you have to be careful, of course, this can get, start sounding really crazy if you do that. And this is generally not something I would recommend beginners do is start playing around with these a whole lot. But that is an option available to you as you sort of start to train your ear and you can start to make more, you know, better judgments about changing the threshold profile. Now, what's really neat here is that if you go into adaptive mode, I'm going to go ahead and click that, you can see the learn button disappears. We're not learning anymore. Now the, the plugin is doing its own building of the noise profile and automatically adjusting that threshold for you. Let me go ahead and play back the audio again and watch what happens to the threshold here in the real-time analyzer. So the blue line here, you'll see it move around as the plugin actually adapts while it's playing back and processing the audio. Here we go. The other thing we say though is, uh, you know, parenting is really built on two pillars. One is structure. So that's pretty interesting. And it does actually a really good job in my experience. And this is sort of the magic from my point of view of the RX voice denoise plugin. I don't know that a lot of other denoising plugins necessarily do things like that. So this, this really makes it quite effective. I will say that if I'm working on something like this audio clip where I have just this really steady state fan running in the background, I will 99.9% .9 of the time use the adaptive mode. All right, next setting, optimize for. We have two choices, dialogue or music. Now, you might ask yourself, well, what's the difference? The main difference is that you're telling the algorithm to work a little bit differently, the plugin to work a little bit differently, depending on the type of material you're working with. We are working with spoken word here, so we choose dialogue. Dialogue is generally different from music or singing in that you don't generally sustain an individual tone for a long time when you're speaking. And so that's going to influence how this particular plugin will work if I have it set to dialogue. If I set it to music, it's going to assume that there will more likely be sustained tones because that's what we do when we sing. So that's the difference there. Generally, again, if you're just working on spoken word dialogue, audio, you'll choose dialogue. Next up, we have our filter type. Now, this is a very interesting one, and this is basically a big trade-off. Let me explain the two different options. You have surgical and gentle. Surgical, its advantage is that it can reduce a whole lot more noise. However, it comes with the trade-off that it can be a little too aggressive sometimes and result in artifacts and change the sound of the dialogue in ways that isn't necessarily really pleasing to the ear. So, it's really useful if you have to get rid of a lot of noise. Say, for example, maybe you're recording something on a factory floor, but you have to be willing to take the trade-off that it's going to make the dialogue sound potentially a little bit unnatural. Now, the trade-off then with the other setting, gentle, is kind of the inverse of that. It doesn't generally remove quite as much noise, but it also generally does a better job at retaining the quality of the audio, and it doesn't really affect the dialogue as severely in terms of actually removing frequencies that you still want to retain there. It won't change the timbre of the audio or the spoken word audio generally. So that's kind of the trade-off there. I will say this, for me, my philosophy generally is I don't want to uh, absolutely eliminate all noise. I'm generally more interested in just making the noise less distracting to the audience. And so if, for example, I'm doing a corporate video, I don't have to have it perfectly clean but I just don't want it to be distracting. And a lot of times, therefore, I'll use this gentle setting. Now, if I were recording something or processing some audio that had been recorded on a factory floor, surgical might make more sense. Again, if it's to the point where I, can, I can't really make out what the person's saying, I might be willing to sacrifice some of the quality of the recording to make it so you can hear what they're saying. And I might not be too concerned about well, this is a very nice representation of this person's voice and, or an accurate representation of their voice because I just want to hear what they're saying. So that's where you might kind of make that choice. Again, for this case, I think we can understand them pretty well. So I'm going to go with gentle because I don't need to do anything super heroic here. I just need to make the noise a little bit less distracting. 
Next up here in this section right here, we have our real-time analyzer, RTA. And what this represents is on the x-axis here, this is a little bit different than the spectrogram. Along the x-axis in this case, we're showing the frequencies. And on the y-axis here, the vertical axis, we're showing the amplitude or how tall the waveform is at any given time. And some people like to call it loudness or, or volume. It's not technically that, but if you want to think of it in those terms, that's kind of what's happening here. So if we go back to the waveform view, that refers to how tall each of these waveforms are. Now, in addition to that, we have a light gray line and a white line. The light gray line is the input or the original audio, and the white line represents the audio after it's been processed by the voice denoise plugin. So you can actually visually see what's happening here. Let me just give you an example here. I'm gonna crank up some of the settings here. We'll go surgical. And we say though, uh, you can see it a little bit better here. You can see there's a significant difference here in the higher frequencies uh, during this particular case. Again, the audio fell below the threshold, and so it applied, or it is starting to apply at least, that 20 dB of attenuation we're telling it to do here, that 20 dB of reducing the higher frequency sounds right here. You can see there's a little bit going on up here in the lower frequency, down here in the lower frequencies, I should say. But that's generally what the RTA does for you. It's a way to visually see how the voice denoise plugin is affecting your audio and where it's removing the noise, where that noise exists according to the plugin. So that can be helpful. Of course, absolutely critical generally to use headphones so you can hear what the changes that you're applying make, you know, whatever settings you're using and how that's affecting the audio. That's the most important thing, but it's nice to have some visuals as well to kind of supplement that. All right, let's move to the next settings. Now, again, if we're in adaptive mode or if we're actually in manual mode, this next setting threshold moves the threshold either down or up. So if we want to get really aggressive and really stomp on that noise, we can push it up. Or if we want to be a little more gentle and less or more transparent, I guess I should say, we can also push that down so it's not going to do as much attenuation. Now, what I will say is that when I'm in adaptive mode, I almost always just leave it at zero again because the plugin itself is adjusting these. But you do have this, again, as another setting to kind of fine tune things and tell it to push harder or don't be so aggressive. Now, the final setting here, reduction in dB, is telling the plugin how much to reduce that particular frequency once the audio falls below the threshold. And we have it set right now to 20 dB. That is a massive amount of, of reduction. I would say this. In my experience, it generally makes a lot more sense to be much more conservative on the overall reduction. And I generally start with that about at 6 dB. I might even apply less in some cases. But generally what I find is if you do have to remove a lot of noise, it might make more sense to do less dB attenuation and do multiple passes with the plugin if you, if you need to do that. So let me just go ahead and give you a demonstration here again. You've heard where we're starting. Let me go ahead and play through with the settings we currently have. Let me demonstrate surgical first, just so you can hear what it sounds like and why I might not use it in this particular case. And I'm gonna really kind of accentuate it so it's very obvious to hear. I'm gonna preview it and I'll turn it off. I'll bypass it while we're playing back as well. So you can hear what the original audio sounds like and the processed audio. We'll go ahead and start with the processed audio. The other thing we say though is, uh... You know, parenting is really built on two pillars. One is structure, guidance. The other is love and warmth. Mm. And what we always try to help parents is to figure out the right balance of those two things. Discipline is not an act of punishment. It's an act of protection. Okay. So there, hopefully get a sense for what that was like. To me when I do 20 dB of attenuation on surgical mode on this particular audio clip, it's starting to sound a little bit unnatural to me. It's sounding almost like he's, you know, it sounds really dry, I guess I should say. It doesn't sound like he's in a room. Um, and that may be what you want for particular circumstances, but my philosophy is don't push it too hard. <laughs> if I have someone in a room and I'm seeing them in a video talking in a room, I don't want it to have really distracting noise, but I also don't want it to sound like they're in an anechoic chamber where there's no such thing as any reflected sound or, or reverb and just kind of starts to feel otherworldly. So let's do another pass this time with the filter type set to gentle. And I want to drop down to 6 dB of attenuation. 
let's see how that goes. The other thing we say, though, is, uh, you know, parenting is really built on two pillars. One is structure, guidance. The other is love and warmth. Mm. And what we always try to help parents is to figure out the right balance of those two things. Discipline is not an act of punishment. It's an act of protection. And we try to help parents think about how to... I don't know if you heard that, but when I pushed this reduction, DB, you started to hear some artifacting, even on gentle mode. And that's why I think it's important not to push this too hard. And it's, it's more important to generally do a smaller amount of attenuation and do multiple passes. So it almost started to have a pumping sound to it. So again, that's a, that's the kind of thing I would generally try to avoid. But let's go ahead and render this. And now I can actually do additional passes. Now, what I want to, I should actually undo that. I'm going to unrender it. <laughs> what I want to do is measure our noise floor here first. So I'm going to pull up our waveform stats. That noise floor is sitting at minus 46 dB max RMS. That's generally the metric I'll use to measure a noise floor. And let's see what happens once I reapply the voice denoise. Okay, it's reapplied it. Let's measure this area now. Now it came in at minus 49.78. So almost, uh, what, 4 dB of, a, of attenuation overall. So it, it has actually pulled that noise floor down a little bit. And this is what it sounds like now. And this is what it sounded like before. So that's actually, you know, it's, it's, it's still there. There's very much a noise floor still there, but it's not nearly as prominent as it was before. Let's do another pass and just see how that sounds. The other thing we say, though, is, uh, you know, parenting is really built on two pillars. One is structure, guidance. Okay, we'll go ahead and render that out. Now our noise floor has fallen to minus 52.26 max RMS. So that's, you know, it's pushing it down just a little bit at a time. And this is what it sounds like now. The other thing we say, though, is, uh, you know, parenting is really built on two pillars. One is structure, guidance. So sounding pretty good. I think if we if we went much farther than that, it's going to start to sound, you know, let's do another round. Just quickly render that. Pick it up from where he was talking. The other is love and warmth. Mm. And what we always try to... See, this is where I start to feel like we're getting a pumping sound a little bit. So I probably wouldn't go three rounds. I'd just do maybe one or two. Now, there are some other things you can do. Once I've done that, I might come back and just apply a plain old high pass filter to help reduce some of that noise. So here I'm in the EQ. I've got a high pass filter set to 80 hertz, um, 48 dB per octave. Watch what happens down here in these low frequencies when we apply that. Great, you can see it definitely cleared it up. Let's go ahead and highlight our noise floor area here. We're now, our max RMS is now at minus 58.17. So that makes a substantial difference. It now sounds like this. Pretty nice, and this is what the overall dialogue sounds like now. I'll play it post-processing, and then I'll go back to the original sound and play that. The other thing we say, though, is, uh, you know, parenting is really built on two pillars. One is structure, guidance. The other is love and warmth. The other thing we say, though, is, uh, you know, parenting is really built on two pillars. One is structure, guidance. So that's a difference you can expect with the voice denoise plugin in Isotope RX. Again, in the elements and the standard and advanced versions. So you can use it in any version. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. If you haven't already subscribed, be sure to do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.